In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to input data into a database by using PHP My Admin. And this is a very simple tutorial. And before we get started, um, we have to create a template before we actually start building our database. So um, what I like to do is use Excel or you can use Google Sheets if you prefer, if you don't have Excel. Um, but the only requirement for having Google Sheets is that you have to have a Gmail account. But nowadays, most people do have a Gmail account. But um, basically you want to create some sort of table that stores information such that you have various columns, as you see here, that depict different variables. So for instance, I have five different columns. Each one is different. Uh, I, the first one would be the ID, which is just going to be auto incrementing, meaning it will increase by one number each time I input a new person into the database since this table looks like a table that stores people's information. So the, the next column will be the user's first name, then the person's last name, then the state they live in and the favorite their favorite color. So as you can see there's a, a global variable as you can or think of it as a column and each column has its own variable and based on what input you have those things change. And it's always best to create a template before you actually input data into your database is because it allows you to actually think everything through so that you don't have redundant information or uh, and so you can have more succinct uh, information in your database. So this is what we're going to actually, actually be building by using PHP My Admin. So to get started, I'm going to open up um, PHP My Admin by going to localhost slash PHP My Admin and is that it? I think I spelled admin wrong. PHP my admin. I'm using a WAMP for this tutorial. You can use Examp if you prefer. And it takes me to a login page. If you have not changed any of the settings in PHP my admin or your local web server, then it should be root and then an empty password. So you just leave it like that and it should take you to your control panel. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna create a new database by clicking this button right here that says new. And I'm going to name the database. So for this, I'm going to say users. And I'm going to create that by simply pressing the enter key. And then uh, this is where I told you to create a template of what you want in your database, as this is the table that we're going to create. Um, so if you look at our Excel sheet, um, there are five different columns for this table that I'm going to create for within the database. So I need five columns and we could give this table a name. So I could give this table name uh, user information. So later I'll explain the scope, or actually I might explain it now. Okay, before we get started doing the input data stuff, I wanna explain the scope of this database. So if you look at the top portion of your screen, it tells you how it's organized. So you, at the very top level, you have your local database or your server. And then within your server, you have databases, which is what you see right here. And then once you have your uh, database, there are, it is further categorized into tables. So within each database, there are tables. And within each server, there are databases. So that's the basic organization of how this goes. So now we're going to start labeling how the data should be inputted for each column. So each row corresponds to each column that we had in Excel. So for the first one is just an ID. So I'm going to put ID for the name. This is going to be an integer. The length of values we do not know because theoretically we could have an infinite amount of users. Um, so we leave that blank and then I'm going to click auto increment by using this uh, radio button, um, it's it, the A underscore I just means auto increment. And what I told you before is that it increments each time when you input someone into this table. So that, uh, that's set, nothing else to change. And then we have a first name, which is pretty self-explanatory, but this time we're gonna use variable characters. Variable characters are basically a string of text and it has a variable amount of bits in there. Now, if that's a little complicated, you can read the documentation down below. 
uh, the whole if you want to learn how to use this that's not the purpose of this tutorial I'm just showing you how to input data so again if you don't if you, I'll leave uh, more about the types there's also integer which is pretty self-explanatory text date so forth and then there's categorizations of those four main things so but typically you're gonna be using variable characters just use that and then we define a length for the, the name I'm gonna say 100 characters for now you can leave default default allows you to input a certain string or value for this column if you leave it undefined so you could leave it as null if you want to leave it empty or you could actually have something change if you and if if it is empty but again we could leave default alone coalition we don't have to worry about that attributes we don't have to worry about that null we don't have to worry about that so all these you could ignore comments and you could actually describe what the row is so or what the column is about so we could say oh this is the user's first name if we wanted to so i'm going to repeat this process for the remaining three columns and i'll see you then so now that i have all my columns created or described by this form i could now save the table so i'm going to click save and there we have our table is created however there's no data within our table now if we look at browse this will be better show the thing so if you see right here these are our five different columns and there's nothing beneath them because there's no data within the database yet so that's the main purpose of this video how to input data and that's very simple all you have to do is click this button on the top part portion of your screen that says insert so now we want to insert some data within the table called user information. So you simply fill out each form based on your template. And as we have right here, we have five different users, five different names, five different states, and five different colors. So now I'm just going to simply go one by one and input the data as needed. And when I input the data, I'll come back. Before I speed up the video, I want to note, note that for the ID, you do not have to input any number or anything. If you, do, if you leave it blank, it will automatically increment to the next number. It starts at 1 and then it increases from there. You can define it at 0 if you want or any other number and it will increase from 1 by from there. So you could just a little side note. So I just finished inputting all the data into my database or into my table, which is within my database. And now I'm going to look at all the data. So I simply press browse and then it takes me to this page. And now you can see the table being formed. If you, and if you look at it closely, it, it matches almost, or it matches exactly what we had in Excel. And that's why I always urge you to, to put your uh, database or your information is a template within Excel and then try to mimic, mimic it within PHP MyAdmin. So that's how you input data into a database. It's fairly straightforward. However, there are many other ways to input data on the database, such as like what if you want a, uh, the user to input the data into a database by using an HTML form? Or what if you have a pattern within your data and you can loop through it and input data into a database? And there's other ways to do it as well. So um, we'll get to, get to that in a future video, as well as how to pull data from the database and display it on your web page. So there's many things what you can do with the database, and it's, it's quite useful. And it allows your website to become more dynamic and more hands-free. So hopefully this tutorial showed you or taught you a little bit something about inputting data into a database, and I'll see you next time.